We've dropped in on the Churchill Arms Pub in Kensington, serving pints since 1750. Winston Churchill's grandparents were regulars. And while it's thriving, it's part of a vanishing breed, as Roxana Sabari now tells us. In the village of Southstoke, outside Bath, the Pack Horse Pub has served the community for 150 years. You might say Brian Perkins goes way back. So you were born in this pub? Yes, that's right, in the room upstairs above the lounge here. 87 years ago? That's correct, yes. But six years ago, he and the town got some bad news. When you heard that the pub was going to be closed, mm -hmm. What did you think? Well, I was disappointed, obviously. I didn't think in my lifetime I'd see it open again. We thought, well, that's it. That's the end of the line. And... For more and more pubs across Britain, it's last call. The decline in pubs has been very dramatic. There's, there's no getting away from that. In the last 10 years alone, we've lost 10,000 pubs. Now, we used to have about 65,000. We're getting to a point where we now have 50,000. This is the George Inn. Uh, the building we're in now was built in 1677, which is pretty impressive. Pete Brown has written more than half a dozen books on pubs and beer. Cheers. He says there's a lot at stake here. I think pubs are an essential factor of British life. I think it defines what being British is to some extent. For centuries, pubs have been a place to mingle, <laughs> read a book, and these days, even take the kids. The British have a famous reserve when it comes to being sociable. Oh, and everything about the pub is micro-engineered to break down those about social barriers and to enable people to talk to each other. Now you're comfy, because you wanted a chair, didn't you, darling? Roxy Beaujolais... This place fits all types. ..has presided at her pub, The Seven Stars, for 20 years. Innkeeping is a nurturing um, career. Yeah, do you want some fresh air? I mean, cooking and, and providing victuals and drink for people of good quality is, you know, a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure if they appreciate it. And her regulars do. What do you like about it? Well, it hasn't changed. <laughs> but if pubs aren't changing, Britain is. You've got changing British social habits, people drinking less generally, uh, really steep uh, hikes in taxation, uh, the smoking ban in 2007. To this brew, add real estate. Pub buildings are getting carved up into apartments. That's the fate the pack horse faced. When a developer announced his plans, the residents were stunned. It was almost a metaphorical pitchfork rebellion. You know, posters went up all over the village and then, you know, around the area, essentially trying to be as loud as possible to say, this just can't happen. And thanks to Dom Morehouse and others, it didn't. Here in England, if a pub is declared an asset of community value, patrons are given time to bid on the property. We were given three months to raise over half a million pounds. <laughs> and they did. So this pub is so important to the community that it actually bought it back. Absolutely. I mean, it's a really unique story. We have now over 430 shareholders. And not only did we raise the half a million plus pounds for the building, we had to raise another equivalent sum of money just to refurbish it. They reopened in March. One, two, Brian Perkins poured the first pint. When we visited, the new owners and their kids were savoring their investment. Do you guys want to work here one day? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. What do you want to do here? Um, anything but the washing up. <laughs> no one in Britain expects all pubs to disappear. The pack horse might just provide a glimpse of their future. I would imagine a lot of people think, well, if they can do it in South Stoke, we should be able to. You can do anything if you try, can't you? 